I've worked for the Office of Accessibility Services for the past 10 years. Um, with the pandemic starting, we saw an incredible influx of captioning requests for a deaf and hard of hearing student. We had on average about 75 video, video requests per semester. Uh, at the end of the pandemic, we had 750 requests and we had to leverage about seven people to try to figure out how to get all those requests through in a timely manner to make sure that students weren't falling behind on content. Um, some of those videos were two hours long, two hour long lectures. So really that led us to believe that it was time to think about creating a closed captioning unit. Um, we needed a bigger workforce. So we were able to bring in volunteers and bring in student workers who are paid through federal financial aid to teach them how to do this work. And it's been really successful so far. We're able to get through that workflow. Um, even after the pandemic, we really think that there's going to be a continued increase in media content. So we're always trying to spread the word. If you're showing media in class, it should be captioned. Whether there's a deaf or hard of hearing student in your class, our goal is to promote accessibility so students don't have to go that extra step to request an accommodation. If the media is there and it's captioned, it's great. It's already taken care of. So in the future, we're hoping everything that passes through the university that's used in a classroom is captioned. Um, it's a big goal, but we think that we can do it. Um, here I just list a few benefits of captions. Um, there are lots of studies if that's something that interests you. Of course, our focus within the office first and foremost is to work with students who request an accommodation. We do also do some captioning for professors and clubs and organizations that just want to take that proactive approach if they send us their media. It's a little bit lower priority because we do focus on students first, but we do get to those, especially over breaks through the summer and we're slowly working on that backlog to, to get more things accessible. Um, we know that captions improve focus, help with retention. It's so beneficial to see a, a word that you're unfamiliar with presented on the screen um, spelled correctly, that really helps. It improve, improves reading skills, especially in young children. Um, focus and reading skills in young children and adults. And I'm sure you've all been in a, a noisy <clears throat> environment where you just can't quite catch what's happening, especially if a video is being shown in a large lecture hall, um, having captions on can really help, help you focus on what's being shown there. There are really three components of closed captioning, um, the video content itself, sorry, the audio content, and also the closed captions. And that's what we're gonna work on. We're really gonna work in this text world to make sure that the text that comes from the script you've created syncs perfectly with the video and the audio. Um, now, I know that you all are working from a script that you've already prepared and that's the best way to do captioning. Um, I'm sure you know that YouTube has auto captions. They're available on most videos. If you leave them there long enough, they'll add those automatically. And it is very possible to go in and correct auto captions, but it is incredibly time consuming. Um, they don't contain punctuation. The YouTube mishears lots of words, things aren't capitalized, they're misspelled. It's just a very time consuming process. So the way that you're gonna approach this is gonna be so much more beneficial to you. You won't have to worry about adding all those extra elements. Um, working this way, make sure you can make sure you're more accurate, line breaks are more consistent and again, just saves you so much time. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the PowerPoint now and just go into some um, documents. I think it's a little easier to show the process that way. And if you have questions along the way, please just let me know. I think I talk about this pretty quickly because I do it all. Yeah, time. just unmute and um, ask. Don't worry about raising your hand. Chances are we won't see it. Sure. <laughs> So here's an example. Um, I just chose a short video to do a demonstration with. What I have here is a completely correct transcript. Um, I, as I understand it, you'll have those from your speeches as well. Um, it's accurate. We've gone through it. Our group of transcribers have gone through to make sure everything's accurate. You can see these little slashes here. And what I'm indicating is line breaks. When you work in YouTube, if you can break your transcript up, at logical places, when you hit auto sync on the video, the captions line up a lot better than if you just put in a bulk amount of text and expect YouTube to break it in, in a logical place. 
So the, the first step after you have your transcript is to go through and break it at logical places. And I have an example of what that looks like here. Same, it's the same transcript. We've just gone through and created line breaks at places that make sense. Um, in that guide that was shared with you, it goes over a few examples of things to do and not do in breaking lines. Um, you would never want to break a name in half. So Kelly Bernard, you would never separate my last name from my first name in a caption so that one appears on one caption, the other on the last. If you're using a descriptor or a modifier, you wanna keep those two words together. Like I think the example was a little red Corvette. You wanna keep that all together. Um, it's much easier for a reader who's relying on the captions not to sort of have to piece together the meeting from the previous caption of what those modifiers were referring to. Um, you also never want to start, you, you never want to end a caption with the first word of the next sentence. So in this example, if I remove this in back here and break it, that makes no sense. It's possible that the reader would miss this in and then start and think they have a run on sentence. Um, this part to me is pretty intuitive. It's just thinking about maybe where a pause in the video or pause in speech would be. A comma is a pretty good indicator that that's a good place to break it. Um, the more work you do on the front end to get this part right, the easier it'll be later when you're working in the YouTube caption editor to line the captions up with the timestamps to make sure everything appears correctly. Um, that's really the tedious process where you're going back and forth a little bit. It's probably the most time consuming part of it. So put the effort in here. It'll make life easier when you get to that point. I'm going to go ahead now and um, go into my email and show you how you get from the invitation that you were sent to your class YouTube page into YouTube into the editor. So I invited myself to my own YouTube page uh, to make the demonstration. You just want to click accept invitation. I've already accepted it. You'll just on yours when you do it for the first time, click go to channel. And I can see here my channel name. I can see this menu indicating that I'm already within the channel that I want to work from. From there, you need to find your video. Um, the video that I'm gonna demonstrate with, it's called Two Minute Neuroscience and it's about the neurons. So I'm just gonna put in a keyword up here and it appears here in the drop down. So I wanna select that. So here I have all the details about my video. Um, I wanna go into the subtitle editor, caption editor. So on the left-hand side, I click that. Now here you can see that my video has been uploaded long enough on YouTube that YouTube has already generated these automatic captions. Again, you can work from that. If you're ever making content, you don't want to go through the trouble of creating a transcript. You can edit these. It's just going to take you a really long time. Um, I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm going to choose to add language and choose English. And you can see here that English is now set as one of the video language options. I don't want viewers to see these automatic captions when they watch my videos. Sometimes YouTube will automatically revert to those captions and a viewer might not know that they have the option of seeing correct, accurate captions. So I just wanna completely delete those. And you just do that by hitting these three vertical dots here and selecting delete. You just have to confirm that. The nice thing about YouTube is anytime you try to delete or change anything, it makes you confirm it at least once. So it's almost impossible to do anything that you can't undo. That's good news. Okay, so now I have only my English video language and that's what I want. So I'm going to select add. Here are my options as to how I want to approach getting my transcript that I've created and broken into this caption editor. Um, for our purposes, I'm going to select auto sync. 
Now at this point, you want to go back to the transcript that you made, the one that's broken. And I'm just going to control A to select all, control C to copy. And I'm just going to paste this in here with control V. So here I have my full transcript. It's broken exactly the way I wanted it. I have an extra line here. Sometimes that happens as it's moving from Word. It doesn't usually cause problems, so I wouldn't worry about that. So I've got it in here. I'm going to click Assign Timings. So YouTube has now sort of judged the content of my document, the length of the video, and it's done its best to time it as it thinks would line up appropriately. Um, at this point, I always save a draft of my video. I've had some of my coworkers who have worked on hour long videos and they got to the end and it, they didn't save a draft. And by the time they had published, all their work was gone. And that's just hours and hours of time that were lost and we have to quickly restart that. So always hit save draft as often as you would in a Word document. Just don't trust YouTube to save your work, I would say. Um, so let me walk through the controls of the, the captioner with you. Um, the play controls are all right here, right on the video itself. It's really straightforward. You have a play button. When you hit play, it turns to pause so you can go back and forth. Um, you can go backwards by 10 seconds, forward by 10 seconds. Here you can adjust your volume. Um, another feature that I use all the time is this gear icon. If you select that, you can choose how fast you want the video to play. A lot of times when you're captioning, if you're going to be, um, if you want to get the, the timings correctly, it's a little tedious. So if you can slow that video down a little bit, it gives you a little bit of time to think about what adjustment you need to make before it moves on to the next section of text. Um, I will say that if you're working at half speed or even double speed for some reason, if that's working for you. When you finish a video, you should always watch it at normal speed. Um, a lot of times if you're working at half speed, things get a little distorted by the last, the last edit of it. So you want to watch it the way that a viewer is going to watch it, make sure that you haven't missed anything. Sometimes there'll be a, a caption that stays on the line just a little longer than you wanted it to, and you can just go back and make those final adjustments. Um, Another important feature here is your zoom in and out screen. This play bar down here is displaying the captions from up here on the side, and it's displaying timestamps of how long that caption is going to stay on the screen. For me, it's pretty small. I don't know how your screen set up. A lot of times I need to zoom in and out to get a closer look at some stuff. And I'll show you in a little bit why this zoom feature is going to um, become really important. If you end up with too much text on the screen, you need to zoom in and sort of do a few additional breaks. So I'll show that to you. So what we're doing here is watching the video. We're actually going to play the video a little bit at a time. You're giving your transcript a second check. You want to make sure that you haven't misspelled anything, that you didn't omit any words. Everything that's in the transcript by this point should be 100% accurate to what's spoken. The only thing that we ever omit in a video is um, uh, and people may be stammering over their speech. For the purpose of captions, it is incredibly distracting, especially to a deaf or hard of hearing person to sort through all that sort of, sort of verbal noise and it takes up a lot of space on the captions. So in this case, it is, it's verbatim other than that we do remove those, those um, misspeaks. Um, for your purposes, you won't need to include sound effects or music. The guide sort of goes over that if you, if you do choose to include it. Um, to meet the standards though for deaf and hard of hearing, you would want to indicate anytime a song plays that maybe generic music is playing. If you know the name of a song or even some of the lyrics, if they're staying audible without someone speaking over them, you would want to indicate those in brackets. Um, that lets the viewer realize it's not someone speaking, it's, it's content that's occurring outside of that spoken text. Um, I'll just add that sometimes you wouldn't inc include stammering in a video if it's 
characterizing the character. Um, if a video was about speech patterns or something very specific like that, you might include those in the captions. Um, we had a video recently about Piglet from Winnie the Pooh, and it was about how anxious he was. In that case, of course, you wanted to include the fact that he stammers. That was showing his characters. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine to omit those. So what I want to do here, so there's this little gray, I don't know if you can see past my pictures down here. There's a little gray bar at the very bottom, and that lets you scroll through this, this bar at the bottom. Um, I want to get all the way back to the start of the video, and I'm going to come over to the left-hand side to do that. There's also this vertical bar, and you can drag it back and forth. You can see that it's moving me through the video. The video is changing as I drag it back and forth. So I want to start at the very first caption. Um, I'm going to try not to play this too loudly. I'm not sure how well you can hear it. Basically, what you're going to do is listen to the video, read along with what you have typed in this first caption, and make sure that this caption is staying on the screen as long as those words are being spoken. By the time the last word on this caption is spoken, the word explain, you need to get ready to transfer transition over to the next caption. Um, when it comes to timings, a caption should stay on the screen for at least one second. You don't want the caption to stay on the screen for any more than six seconds in most situations. It just gets to be too much. It's lingering too long. So if my last caption ended and there was 30 seconds of silence, nothing should be on the screen during that silent period. You would want to end that caption so nothing's being displayed. Um, one second in most cases is long enough for a reader to catch what's said. If someone is speaking incredibly fast, it's okay to extend it just a little bit further to make sure that the reader has time to, to catch what's being said. It's sort of a judgment call. You have to think about at what rate you're able to read that. And it depends very much on how fast somebody speaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Neuroscience, where I simplistically explain neuro Okay, so at that point, we'll watch it again. Neuroscience, where I simplistically explain neuroscience topics in two minutes or less. Okay, so that's pretty good. That lined up pretty well. What I see here, though, is that I'm starting a new sentence in this caption box. I don't really want that. It would be better for the reader for me to start a new caption here. To do that, I'm just going to hit the enter button. And you can see that that first sentence joined with the box below. Now it's part of the next caption. If I didn't want to do that, it's simple. I can just use backspace and it takes me right back up to the box before it. So here I'm editing just box by box. Where I will discuss the neuron. Okay. So that's another good place for me to hit enter to break those up. Does anyone have any questions at that point? I mean, that part I think is fairly simple, but. One of the things that I'll mention is that when you, when you share your speech on VoiceThread, I grade it and then I, am, I export it and then I upload it onto YouTube, okay? So right now, I think I've, I've got all of your speech ones on YouTube. Now, what I need to do is to get into YouTube and make you all editors, okay? So you'll get that invitation where you'll accept it and then that will permit you to get in and start this. And you'll be working, you'll be editing, of course, just your own right now, okay? And now if there's somebody that wanted more service hours, if you're going for the master certified student leader, then certainly this is something you can do and I can give you others to edit. But for, for this semester, you're just responsible for editing your own, okay? So I just, I didn't wanna make everybody editors until we had this, this, and I'm going to take this, well, we're recording this. So I will give you the link to this so you can go back and look at it and listen to it. And Kelly also is going to take a look at that PowerPoint that she presented, see if you have any questions that she wants to add more information. And I'm going to upload the PowerPoint too. So you will have the manual, you will have this, 
and you will have her PowerPoint, okay? So think about questions that you have as she's going through this. And I know it's kind of overwhelming at first, so you might not know enough to be able to formulate a good question, but regardless of whether you think the question is good or not, ask it now so we can get it recorded and, and maybe help you out in the future, okay? So does anybody have any questions now before she continues? Okay. I have a question. Um, so I see like how some of the lines that you have have like two like up and down and then others you have made down to one. Mm -hmm. And then like the one with this is the brain like the, that's several. So I can see you're gonna like move that down. Yeah. But normally on closed captions, do you like it to be one line or do you like it to be two to keep it in the one to six second time limit? Yeah, that's a good question. One line is okay and two lines are okay. You never want to have more than two. It's just too bulky and it tends to start covering up the speaker's face and things that might be shown in the video at that point. Um, it really comes down to the timing. How fast someone is speaking makes a big difference. You can say a lot of words in six seconds and it might be that you need to have those two lines. I think I tend to speak pretty slowly, so probably I could get away with one line. Um, either way, whatever works out for your timing so that you're at least one second, no more than six seconds. Just a judgment call. Thank you. That's a good question. Um, I also, I didn't go through the whole PowerPoint because I think it's a lot easier for me just to show you in the editor, but I have all of these functions drawn out with boxes around where things are later in the PowerPoint and I'll send that to you. So all of these commands that I'm sort of talking about now, they'll be highlighted there. It'll make it a little easier if you're comparing and going back and forth that way, I think. Um, so you're right, right here I have one line of text and then I have a couple lines below it. Um, I'm not gonna play the audio at this point. I'm just gonna use some examples and pretend that we're hearing certain things so I can address some issues that can occur when you're captioning. Um, so let's say he takes a long time to say this is the brain. So we're gonna break this one here. Same thing, I just wanna hit enter. Um, I'm starting to get a lot of text on my screen. And I'm actually just gonna continue to make that a problem for myself. because I wanna show you something that can happen that's really frustrating if you don't know how to back out of it. I've got even more text on my screen, more text on my screen. If you keep hitting enter over and over again, it's pushing the text down to the box below it. If you're not paying attention, you're eventually gonna get this huge bulk of text on the screen. There has to be a way to fix it. So what you wanna do is, I'm gonna come down here and zoom out a little bit. So I have this blue box here that has all the text in it and it's touching the gray box that comes next. The reason this text keeps piling on top of itself is because those two caption boxes are touching down here in this timeline. I need to add a space. If I can separate this blue box from this gray box, eventually it'll stop sort of adding up on top of itself. So that's sort of the thing to keep in mind. If those two text boxes are touching, they're gonna to keep adding up. But if you can separate them, eventually it'll break into, when you hit enter, it creates a new caption box. Eventually you'll get to a point where there's the right amount of text in each box and you're not continuing to pile up. So I'll just show you what that looks like. This is where I find this difficult to see sometimes. So sometimes in my browser, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, you want to hover over this white line in between the blue box and the gray box and just click and drag it, either one of them, so that you have this white break between them. So now nothing's touching. That's good um, in this case because I want to stop this bulk of text from happening. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm just going to arbitrarily play the video for a few seconds to demonstrate this. So say that I want to put a line break here. That in another text box. Say another six seconds has passed, things look good. I'm gonna break it here. You can see that now it's not piling on top of itself. You've actually been able to stop that problem from happening and you can keep breaking from there. Um, I always like to mention that I've had a lot of student workers in the past who send me a video and there are like 30 lines of text on the screen and they're in a panic. <laughs> you, you have to separate those boxes. That's what's gonna fix that problem. Um, we'll do that one more time, just to get back to sort of a normal place. Okay. 
Now, if he's flowing right back into speech, he says this line, it flows right into this line of speech with no pause. I just want to extend this box back out so that it touches. I'm really just coming down here to separate those so they're not building on top of each other. And that's something that you might have to do occasionally as you're working through that video, breaking lines to match the timings. Um, once I get that set, I tend to zoom back in just because the edges are so, strong, so small on my screen. Um, that's really the basics of what you're doing. You're making sure what's said is on the screen long enough to match what the speaker's saying. You're using the enter button to break it down into the next box. If you make a mistake, you can just hit backspace and it'll go backwards, um, back where it was before. Kelly, is there any particular way that they could write their script that would prevent the buildup in these boxes from happening? I mean, is there a way that, do you have any suggestions there? It's really the line breaks that are gonna prevent that. If we didn't do that line break and we just dumped the entire transcript in, in paragraph form, this would be so much worse. Um, okay. Doing those line breaks is really as close as you can get. Now, if you, if during the whole process, you're zooming out and taking the time to put just a little break between these boxes, you can avoid getting into that situation. I just really highlight that feature because it seems to happen that you're on a roll and you're hitting enter and you're happy with your timings and next thing you know, you have that. So, I mean, I tend to zoom out every couple captions and just make a little bit of space for myself to make, to prevent it from getting to the point where it's overwhelming. Um, it's hard to zoom out far enough at some point to correct that. Um, and that probably would be a good time to save when you were talking yeah. about reading continually. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yep, so we'll do that here. Um, I wanna show a few more features uh, just that operate over here on the text. You can use control C, control V, you can cut and paste over here if you just wanna move one word down or if you've misspelled something. You can actually even, I think it'll work in this version. If this was misspelled, you can highlight it and right click and it'll give you a better spelling if it, if it has one for you. All of those functions work here, which is nice. Um, so I've been telling you that enter moves the, the bottom line of text down to the caption line below and that's true. Um, let's say though you have this caption here and for some reason you wanna move the word textbook down to the next you don't want to create a new caption. You just want to move one word down to the line below it. If you hold shift and hit enter, that moves it down to the second line in the same caption box. So enter by itself pushes it down to the next caption box. Shift enter, just like in Word, moves just that right down to the next line. And again, um, control Z, all that works to undo, redo, all those functions work. So that's, that's really what you're doing. You're going through the whole video second by second. Everything matches up, everything's spelled appropriately. If you have a really bad line block, you can fix it over here. Um, I just create these, I'm sorry, my dog is excited. So let's say this word appeared here and you don't want it. You can hit enter to move it down to the next line um, or you could cut I mean, that's, that's really the gist of it. This is incredibly tedious and time consuming. So if you've spent half an hour and only gotten through, you know, the first five minutes of a video, I wouldn't be surprised by that, especially when you're learning the editor. Um, again, we've captioned two hour long videos and spent liter literally days on them with a couple of us working on them to get everything completely accurate. So I'll give yourself a lot of grace, especially when you're learning it. It takes a lot. Those are really all the functions that you need to know. Um, you know how to move stuff down, you're adjusting your timelines here. I will highlight that a little bit. You, to, If you wanted to extend this caption because it wasn't on the screen long enough, so this caption, let's say it needs to go a second or so longer, you wanna come down to this timeline, move your mouse to the far right edge of it to extend it, just slide it over. 
that adds time up here in this box. You can see, I'll do that again. It was ending at 111.02. I'm adjusting it. Now it's staying longer than that. So if you need the caption to stay a bit longer, you're just sliding it over. You can theoretically use numbers in these boxes. You could type numbers in here um, to extend it. So I'll shorten this. You just type your number and hit enter and it'll actually shorten that caption. I have never had any success with that. It, so dramatic the change that it makes that I really don't recommend that. If it works for you, I suppose that's fine, but I think your best bet is to always be working down here in this player bar. Um, so yeah, that's that's really it as far as what you're doing in here. Um, you just want to hit those quality guidelines. I'll just highlight again, one second is long enough, six seconds is fine. Anything other than that, anything less, anything more is a problem. One line of text is perfectly fine. Two lines are fine. You don't want to have any more than that. Um, so does anyone have any questions at this point? Anything I can go over again or? So when you save the draft and let's say you get to the end and you think you're finished, yeah. you think it's good. So you publish at that point? Do you publish? Okay, yeah. now let's say you publish mm -hmm. and then you figure out you made a mistake. Yeah. Can you fix it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can ask to go back in. When you hit publish, that makes the captions visible to a viewer. So if someone has that link, that link before you hit publish, they weren't able to see those captions. As soon as you hit publish, it adds it to the video. Anyone can see it. Um, if you realize that you want to work on it a little bit more, it's the same thing. You just hit edit and you can go right back into the editor. Um, if I'm working on a video for several sessions, I'm saving often. I also write down where I stopped. Um, it's really annoying if you forget where you stopped and you have to watch, you know, 30 minutes of a video and try to find out precisely where you stopped editing. So I always just make a note of that to save myself a little bit of time when I go back in. Okay. What questions do you all have? It's a lot to take in. And I think that uh, I know from my, from my viewpoint, I'm gonna to have to get in and do it before I, and then go back and watch it and see what makes sense to me. Cause I'm sure I'll have other questions and I'm sure they will too. But for right now, can you think of anything else that? Uh... Uh, Dr. Atkins, are you gonna have this recording of the Zoom meeting up on eCampus? Yes, okay. yes. I will put this recording up there. I will put her PowerPoint and you've got the manual. And then the other thing is I know that you've already submitted your first speech and the second one is due, we said next Friday, I think. Uh, and I mean, I wanna get started working on these at the same time, I don't want you to stress out over working on them. So let's let's take a little bit of time. I want you to play with it, get in. I'll go in the meantime, let's say by tomorrow, I will get into YouTube, send you the invitation so then you can get in and see your speech on YouTube and play with it a little bit. Right now, they they are unlisted. Nobody else can see them unless they have the link. So you don't have to worry about that. Don't change anything there. Uh, your edit rights basically are just to add close captioning. That's all you're doing, okay? We're not gonna, and, and if, you, if there's anything else that you think needs change for whatever reason, and I doubt that we can change much now, but let me know that. Don't, don't take it upon yourself to change anything else, okay? And right now, I think the way that I'll have to go back and look at it, but I think I have playlists. And so your playlist will probably be something, and I'll tell you this in the email, but it'll probably be something like uh, cohort four speech one, and, and maybe uh, spring 2000, something that identifies this semester. And, I, and right now, I want all the speeches still numbered for my benefit so I can keep track of, you know, you're doing six speeches this semester. I can always get back in and eliminate the word speech one whenever we release everything. So right now that that just helps me because I've got so many, I'll have a hundred speeches this sem just this semester alone to worry about. But so anyway, I will try to work on that tomorrow and get that to you so you can start taking a look at it. Uh, in the meantime, work on your speech to script, get that in, 
and maybe we can come up with some type of a deadline. You all are welcome to talk about this. You can use your chat or do whatever, and you can tell me what's a good deadline to have the closed captioning in for the first two speeches, okay? Because that way it gives you some breathing room. And as long as we do it, I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm under a big deadline here, but I can't really release them. I mean, we did on the PSA website, I want them on there, but the university really needs to have closed captioning. So even what's on there now,